Welcome to our solemn celebration of the Passion of Christ, starting from the Mount of Olives to the across the Kidron Valley to the Garden of Gethsemane. We pick it up from there, and, uh, and so we pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told to see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the Son, the arm of the Lord, been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, he was held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole by his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of all of us. Though we harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to slaughter or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten up with the sin of his people? A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken no falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants for a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for those their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your 
of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden 
into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you I am, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him. I have spoken publicly to the world I've always taught in a synagogue or in a temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong, but if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? 
They answered and said to him, If you were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death, he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, <clears throat> My kingdom does not belong to this world. My kingdom did belong to this world. My attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Then take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We, we have the law. law. And according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you? and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him. You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If, if you, you release him, him you, you are, are not a friend of Caesar. Caesar. Everyone, Everyone who makes, makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in this place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take, take him away, take, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him, two others, 
one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do, Do not, not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. For the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate, if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths 
along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. some churches, they will use the seven last words of Jesus for a reflection on the passion of Christ, which you've just read. The first one, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. The only way he could excuse these people for their crimes was out of ignorance. The second word was, today you'll be with me in paradise. To the thieves, he gives a message of hope and expectation third word was, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. And so Joseph is the one who's, or John is the one who is committed to take care of Mary. Uh, believed God to, went to, goes to went to Ephesus. The third uh, word was, or the fourth word is, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's not a, it's not a, a listing of despair, but it's, it's really an opening of, this, of one of the psalms that they're all familiar with, and all you do is read the first line, like, the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want, and bear the pastor gives me repose, beside the rest of the waters he leads me. So once you get to read the first line, you're off, you're gone, you know. So that was, that was one of the psalms they used to have. So it's not a, a, a prayer of despair, but one of, of, of blessing. The fifth word, I thirst. And then the sixth word, uh, it is finished. And the seventh word is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. So it's a lovely rendition of a way of, of studying the, the seven last words of Jesus and put them together for uh, a preparation. But so we take, we pick it up from the story from the time that he crossed the Kidron Valley, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. It is there that Judas arrives with a cohort of soldiers and with lanterns and clubs and swords and everything. So uh, now there's been 12 errors in the law in the, in the trial of Christ and that was one of them. They should not arrest somebody in the middle of the night because it's dark. You only have these little lanterns. You don't have the modern lights that we have. And so you could easily uh, pick the wrong person. But the key was that Jesus was to kiss. The one I kiss, he says, that's the one. And so there would be no mistake about arresting the wrong person. And then from there he goes to the house of Caiaphas up on the hill. It's not too far, just uh, from here probably to uh, El Camino. And it's uphill. And at the house of Caiaphas, he was uh, the one who probably was there when Jesus overturned the, temp the tables of the temple over and spilled all the money and said, you have turned my house into a house of my house is a house of prayer, you've turned into a, a marketplace. And I think that was Jesus signing his death warrant there. That was Caiaphas decided, we're going to do away with this guy. We can't ruin my business and all the money they would make from money changing and paying for all the doves and the animals and the, the, the sacrifices they made around the temple area. Uh, Jesus then is brought before Pilate. <clears throat> they convened a Sanhedrin a quick trial up in the house of Caiaphas, and then they moved to, uh, to Pilate. See, the Jews could not kill anybody. Their law says you can't, you can't have, you can't execute anybody. 
And so they had to get somebody else to do it for them. So they get the Romans to do it for them. They bring him to Pilate and says, this man has been, according to our law, he should be killed. He didn't say that they will do it, but according to our law, they should be killed. <clears throat> now Pilate, <clears throat> well, Pilate should have said, I see no, I see no justification for this in my, my book. There's no ground for justification for in this trial of Christ that, that he be condemned. He should have let him go right there. That was an error of law. If there's no criminal, there's no, there's no crime, he should be let go. He should be released. I was reading a, an article in the paper the other day about a fellow who was released from serious uh, charges. Let go because of some protocol. It was too long before they came to the trial. But I mean, this is all a rushed up affair. This all happens within so many hours. Uh, then the Sanhedrin should not be convened in the middle of the night. They're all sleepy. How, how, how fresh will they be? How bright will they be? They're supposed to meditate on the decisions anyhow for 24 hours. But they rush everything through. There they're, they're, they get Pilate to say, I'll scourge him and then let him go. Wash my hands. And uh, Pilate does that, but uh, these are all errors of law. So there's about 12 altogether, but that's all I can remember for, for this morning, so, or this uh, afternoon. So there's, there's, there's plenty more in there if you want to go into the legality of it all. Uh, there was a dispute about what sign they would put over the cross, and Pilate says, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, <clears throat> was written in three languages, Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. So no matter who was there, could understand that very clearly that this was no ordinary man. This is the king of the Jews. He is, uh, it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and, and, and uh, Greek. So th those are the three languages that the people would know. So we have with us today then, uh, thinking of this great walk through. I was remember having a group with me and uh, we said we started, I gave them all a book, little book on the, uh, the stage of the cross. Well, they couldn't use it. It was too, it was like a marketplace. Narrow little streets, uh, noise going on, people shopping. You couldn't get a group to stand around for any two minutes. And so we finished up reading somewhere along the way on their own. Because there was no way we could stop. So, but that's, that hasn't changed. That was probably the way, that the realism of it is that, is that uh, today is the very same thing. There's nothing different, except that there would be a criminal going through every, every day, probably, for execution. The whole Appian Way, if you were in Rome, the whole Appian Way south of Rome was lined with crosses for anyone to oppose the, the Romans. And uh, all of those umbrella pines are all that streets going way down south. Uh, heading in the direction of Salerno or Sorrento or Capri or any of those places. Anyone that opposed the Romans coming in knew what was going to happen if they didn't obey the, the laws. What amazes me is that everything Jesus does is that scripture might be fulfilled. Just about every, every line is the scripture might be fulfilled. Remember he says to them, where are your witnesses? <clears throat> witnesses? What witnesses? They couldn't agree. So you can go through the scripture and read it a little more on your own quietly, but try to try to find out some of the rest of the, the story, which would mean that there's more than what I'm just telling you about. The, the, there's 12 errors of law, any one of which would have meant that he should have been set free, especially Pilate. I find no guilt in this. And send him, he sends back to the Jews, uh, kill him according to your own law. But knowing that the, the, he knew well that the Jews couldn't do it, it was against the law to, to do it. So the detail in, in, the, in the Passion, as in most of the scriptures, are so accurate that uh, it's unbelievable. The, the, the fulfillment of all those prophecies, too. There's look at Jesus who suffered for our sins. Isaiah was writing 50, 600 years before the coming of Christ. Look at you, so he rose again for our infirmities, according custom to our sins. Upon him was the, ju the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We'd all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. And the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. 
You read that in the 50th chapter of 52nd or first chapters of Isaiah. It's a beautiful rendition. We did the first reading. We did a bit of it there this morning. And so um, we go now. We do the solemn prayers, and then we have a communion service. Okay, that's that's the procedure today. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who choose him for the order of bishops, may keep safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church, the people of God, to govern the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayer and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian peoples, might governed by their, by their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Pray for all the priests, bishops, and deacons of the Church, for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty God, <clears throat> by whose spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our prayers for, for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace we may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for Catholic humans, that's those just coming into the Church. Let us pray for uh, our Catholic humans, that our Lord and God may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts, and unlock the gates of, their, of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all his sin, their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in one church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who gathered what is scattered, and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptized has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before him with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in public office, Almighty and ever living God, who created all peoples to seek out always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you as the one true father of our human race through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in tribulation, and we're in tribulation with the coronavirus, and there's a lot of people very upset, and their whole lifestyle has changed. Let us pray dearly, beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, 
banish diseases, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety to pilgrims return, health to the sick and salvation to the dying. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort the mourners, strengthen all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in tribulation come to you, that all may rejoice because of their hour of need. Your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's no veneration of the cross this, this afternoon. Uh, because of the virus, and so uh, we just move into the next part of the program, which will be the uh, the Our Father and communion service. So they prepare the altar with bringing the candles and a little cloth here. Uh, that this this Eucharist has been reserved overnight in the tabernacle, which the tabernacle is 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 a place for reservation for for the sick. Communion right. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil wish to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom and power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and the people of God. And graciously grant them peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your spirit. spirit. We extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Agnes Dei, tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On this day, we told us by Catamundi, Miserere nobis. On this day, we told us by Catamundi, Domina nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I have heard the word of the Lord. 